What is this madness? Two Budget Nin recorded games in the same evening? Yes, it's real. This is what we're reduced to at 4 a.m. when you're stuck in quarantine with little else to do. This game is awesome. It is against Dead Mage, who actually joined my game despite the title of my game saying that it was budget. I actually don't really mind when people with full strength decks join because obviously everybody has a different definition of what full strength means. And um, I don't specifically say please don't join if you're not playing budget, but I do point out on my, my game comments that it is in fact a $2 budget deck. So kind of get all comers. And uh, Dead Mage I've played before. Actually, this guy plays real decks. Um, they don't tend to be super, super cutthroat, but he does play with expensive cards. I don't really mind. I like the challenge. It's fun. So off we go. I did win the die roll, which is incredibly important. And um, let's take a look at the opening hands here. He is playing new commander, Shulane, Teller of Tales. This thing is actually really similar to Rune, that other Bant commander that's been around for a while. I think it's like a 4-4 or 4-5 with Vigilance, and you can... Well, you can uh, you can flicker a creature, I think, with its ability versus returning a creature you control to its hand. So you kind of it's kind of like runes mimics runes ability, only it bounces the guy rather than getting it to just re-enter the battlefield and, and triggering its enter the battlefield thing right away. However, it does have a pretty powerful secondary ability, which is basically it's the, well, like beast caller or beast master, whatever the hell that thing is. The two, the two, three for four mana that lets you draw a card whenever you cast a creature. So this thing has that ability and allows you to play extra lands fast and allows you to bounce guys to go. So it's, it synergizes. It's kind of a neat little, a neat little uh, card advantage package, albeit a slow one. But it does allow you to double up on things, draw a card, and, and use the come into play ability on lots of stuff. So I expect him to be playing a lot of things that kind of do that, possibly ways to untap Chulain, mana production, usual stuff. I have an awesome draw for this deck. This is basically about as good a draw as you can hope for, minus, I don't know, maybe Ponder being an island or something. Um, mana ramp. Yeah, I'm cheating. 2DH doesn't allow you to play with Soul Ring, but I find that if I don't play with Soul Ring in my deck, I don't have the ability to tutor for it or fetch it. I just feel kind of resentful whenever anybody plays fast mana artifacts against me because I don't even have one in my deck. So even though this card is actually not legal in official 2DH, I do run it online. When I play 2DH live against regular decks, I always ask my opponent if they're playing with Sol Ring, and if they say that they are, then I keep mine in. And if they say that they're not or they want to take theirs out, then we both sort of just substitute something else for it. So it's all it's all fair, I think, online. And occasionally you just draw it in your opening hand, and yeah, it's as bullshit as ever, even, <laughs> even in a budget deck. <laughs> anyway, off we go. Uh, of course, this is a no-brainer keep, and I love having a braid, too, because that means I can deal with his Krypton Soul Ring, should he draw them. All right. So I'm leading with Myriad Landscape here. There's no reason whatsoever for me to play Soul Ring turn one, and uh, other than potentially it getting countered, I suppose. But if I play it turn one, I expose it to artifact destruction as well. And if I go turn two, I play a mountain, cast Soul Ring, and then I have the ability to immediately activate Myriad Landscape to go get two islands and massively mana ramp. And I really want to just play this card right now. I mean, what is my turn two play if I play, if I go Mountain Soul Ring? It's probably something like Palladium Mirror, play the come into tapped Myriad Landscape. Then I'm miles away from ever getting blue mana, which bricks the forbid and really gives him a lot of space to develop. So I'm making this play instead just because it guarantees, well, provided that he doesn't counterspell my Soul Ring, it, it guarantees that I'll have the ability to forbid on turn three, which is really important. All right. Oh. Speak of the Devil, Mana Crypt, turn one. And not even a budget one, Anna Savannah. <laughs> and Sol Ring. <laughs> Lovely. All right. Well, any uh, any guilt I felt about having Sol Ring in my opening hand is completely assuaged. This is, like, absurd. What is this thing? Partner with Lore Weaver in their hand from their library. What is Lore Weaver, I wonder? I have no idea what Lore Weaver is. It's surprising he's not running it. But this does have the ability to untap two lands. So he's got a Savannah in play. He ba assuming that he's got a land next turn, what did he put it? Seven mana to play on turn one? <laughs> Good thing I got Sol Ring to at least give me some degree of parity. That's ridiculous. Yeah, he does not reveal Lore Weaver, so it will remain a mystery, whatever that card is. Okay, let's see here. Well, I really love to draw blue mana. Blue would be wonderful. Um, but I do at least have the ability to tutor for it. 
mountain. That is not blue mana. So I'm going to play Soul Ring here. And I think about this. Obviously, the play that I mentioned before was that I was going to play a mountain, and then I was going to go and play Myriad Landscape. Um, I'm sorry, I was going to play a Soul Ring off the mountain and then activate Myriad Landscape to get Island Island. The problem is that he just put Lay Weaver into play, and he's got a green-white land out. And so i got to assume he's got blue, if you remember from my last video. If you're playing Counter Magic, always assume the worst and decide if you're going to tap out or do something, always decide whether or not you can deal with whatever the worst is. And if you can deal with it with cards already in your hand or you're going to draw a bunch of cards that probably offer a solution, then it is okay to tap out to develop. So, for example, if I had an easy solution to a 2-4 Vigilance creature, like not an Abraid, something like a Flame Tongue Kavu, then I would feel completely comfortable just tapping out here to play Palladium Mirror doing the play that I mentioned before, which is to sack the Myriad Landscape to go get two islands. So, yeah, he'd play his guy, but I would just destroy it, and, and then I'd be able to uh, hopefully deal with it or counter it on the turn that he played it again. But because of the way that this has worked out here, if he does, in fact, if I let Layweaver free, and he's got a blue mana source, which is, of course, the worst-case scenario, then this thing comes down, and I don't have an answer to it, and it could easily snowball out of control very, very quickly, given the fact that it draws cards like crazy. So I can't let him do that, and that means that I have to take, regretfully, leave him with his two grotesque artifacts, and kill the one thing that'll allow him to likely play his guy next turn, because this means that um, it's sort of a, it makes both green and blue or white mana depending on what he needs. So that means I sadly have to abrade this, <laughs> this horrible thing, honestly. Four mana, four mana two two. It's like super conditional version of um, actually. You know what it's exactly like? There's like this four mana artifact that I saw in another recent one of my budget games. It taps to make a mana of two different colors, one of each color, and it comes into play tapped and it costs four mana. So it's very, very similar to Lay, Lay Weaver, actually. But Lay Weaver, of course, requires you actually have the lands. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling bad here. I'm feeling really worried. And if he's got Savannah followed up by two more lands of two different colors, I'm going to be in big, big trouble because I, I, there's literally nothing I can do next turn. I just have to hope he doesn't have colored mana that makes his commander work. I see him start to tap stuff. Yeah, that's Lightning Greaves. Also very, very powerful, but... And he's tapping some more stuff. Rishkar. Pima, Pima Renegade. Wow, okay. Well, that's going to be a 3-3 three, three with haste that makes green. So he's got green and white, but he does not have the critical blue mana source. Lovely. It's two opponents in a row, actually, who have failed to draw blue for a while. And he doesn't... Greaves it for some reason, bash me for three. Don't really know what's going on there, but I draw Fact or Fiction. Okay, well, I gotta go and just hope he doesn't draw blue mana next turn, because then he's going to have this guy with Greaves on him, and my life is going to get really, really difficult. Particularly because I've already uh, cast my Abraid, which is one of my precious artifact kill spells. So I'm just going to go and fetch the fetch double blue and hope he's got nothing. Come on, Dead Mage. Fail to draw blue. All right, he's tapping some more mana. Voyaging Seder, all right? He's got all the green and white mana in the world, and no blue. He just doesn't attack with this either. Just maybe he doesn't fully know what Lightning Greaves does. <laughs> I don't really know what to think of that. Okay. Wandering Fumarole, very nice. It's blue and red. Actually, it's Fumarole. I've been calling it Fumarole for ages because I heard it in some video, some some volcanism video years ago, but it's actually pronounced fumarole, like the way it looks rather than fumarole. <laughs> um, yeah, small disclosure. All right, I'm going to play Wandering Fumarole, and unfortunately it comes into play tap. So I've got a bunch of options here. I could play, um, I could gamble again, obviously. He bricked on blue last turn, and because of that, I could, I could take the greedy route, and I could play Palladium Mirror and Nin and Ponder, which isn't a totally insane play because... Given the fact that I would untap in a Nin, and I've cast a Ponder, there's a reasonable a reasonable chance that I might draw a solution to his commander at least one time. The problem with that is the Lightning Greaves, and Lightning Greaves could really, really prove problematic if I did, in fact, draw a bunch of removal, but I could not kill his commander, and then it would start to snowball out of control while I would struggle to keep up. And I don't really want to sacrifice a position that feels like it's fairly safe here. Um, all three of these cards are great, which means I'm probably not going to buy back for bid if, in fact, uh, he were to draw blue next turn. 
But I figure that um, if he doesn't have blue and I don't have to counter something big next turn and he does have an alarming amount of mana in play already, it doesn't look like much, but it's actually, what is this, seven? Yeah, he's got seven in play. Um, and he were to cast something big and scary that has a lot of green mana in the casting cost, I would feel really stupid if I tapped out. And if he doesn't do anything powerful, then I've got Factor Fiction at the end of the turn. So that's perfectly acceptable, and I'm just going to pass based on that. And what I said about development versus whether you can deal with stuff. That's generally the biggest decider of whether or not you tap out playing a control deck. You don't need to counter stuff if you can destroy it in play or steal it or do something like that or maybe bounce it. And it's usually more important to develop early. All right, place a quest for renewal. Whenever creature control becomes tapped, you may put a quest. Now, this is sort of like a weird, slow version of, um, I don't know, the whatever that 2-4 thing is for five mana that untaps all your stuff. Oh, it untaps all your creatures. So kind of strange. I'm not really sure why he's got this in the deck. I guess it's got interesting synergy with, um, yeah, I guess it's got interesting synergy with Chulane. He can do strange things like use Chulane to bounce something and then untap it and his mana creatures to bounce another thing if he needs to. So I've, I guess it has cool synergy with this guy. All right, it's just going to hit me for three. Not a big deal. He's just not wanting to attack with this. There's got to be a reason for that, but what is it? Does he have like a green or white spell? That must be what's going on here, but regardless... I'm going to pull the trigger on the Factor Fiction. Hoping it gets, I don't know, a Sweeper would be best, or I was thinking I had Vandal Blast in my deck. Obviously, I know I have By Force, but By Force would be perfectly amazing. Killing off two mana artifacts and the Greaves would really, really a huge setback for him. So, hoping to get Artifact Kill right now. He's got no response. Uh, hello, game. What is happening here? I'm going to pause and see if I can get this resumed. One sec. Okay, picking up again. I had to start the replay over and get back to this moment. Hopefully it doesn't stall again. So, when we last left off, Factor Fiction was on the stack, and we were waiting to see what gets revealed. And perfectly pops up this time. Very glad to see that. Interesting, it's Thirst for Knowledge and Four Land. So I'd be curious... For the audience to know or to think what you would do in this situation, certainly seeing the opponent with plenty of mana and only three cards in hand, it is pretty hard, actually. And I don't think I would do a 4-1 split. I think I would probably put... I'd probably put the Thirst for Knowledge with an island and then split it off that way. I think any time you can get your opponent to take the smaller pile, you're probably coming out ahead, unless it's like four completely useless cards. And granted, I do have a lot of mana in play, but mana is a precious resource in general, particularly in a blue-red deck. And giving me a ton of lands isn't necessarily a great idea. Plus, obviously, I have Forbidden Hand, and he doesn't know that. So these, each of these lands is like, each of these pairs of lands is like a counterspell. So uh, it turns out that he thinks for a little while. I see him think for a while like that, and then eventually he moves the Command Tower down for all four and locks that in. And this is, in my opinion, a no-brainer keep, because uh, if there's anything that Nin likes, it's lands. And I'm not really under a lot of pressure right now anyway. And this gives me the Kerr Keep as well, which I love in this deck. So strong. I think it's actually not a budget card or a 2DH card officially anymore. I think it crept up over $2 for some reason. People just want to make their Kobolds, or maybe just because it's old. Anyway, what is it from Future Sight, I think? All right, Prismatic Lens, junky two-mana artifact, but it does come into play untapped. But unlikely I'm going to be playing that anytime soon. This feels like good forbid food to me. So uh, this is the turn... To, uh, to play Nin the Pain Artist, given the fact that I've got enough mana now to cast Forbid with buyback using all of these uh, these things he just gave me, and my Palladium Mirror, Quasi Soul Ring. Yeah, in retrospect, I probably should have played the Kirk Keep here over the land, so that way I had the ability to make a token at the end of the turn if he did absolutely nothing, but I just, I feel like it's pretty likely I'm going to be forbidding something here, and uh, that's the reason why I didn't play it, just keeping all my blue mana available. All right, what's going on here? He's spending a lot of mana. What is this? I, I was thinking, I see him pay six, and I figured he probably is casting Green Sun Zenith for five. I don't know, maybe to go get uh, Cidic Slime or something. Can't play with Prophet of Crufix anymore, and he casts Finale of Devastation. Pretty cool new card. Giant Dinosaur. It's kind of like a... Kind of like Green Sun Zenith, only it's... Um, it has this extra ability attached to it where well obviously it doesn't get reshuffled but it has this crazy ability where if you pay a ton of mana 
on it, you uh, you basically overrun and kill your opponent. And he's casting it for four. I have no idea what fours he has in his deck. I figure it's probably going to get something like Oracle of Moldiah because he really needs mana. And given how uncertain uncertain the uh, outcome of this could be and how it could be potentially devastating, I have no idea. I mean, he could get like, I don't know, um, what is that? The one, two creature that fetches enchantments out of your deck when it dies. Oh, the name eludes me. It's it's 4.15 in the morning. Apologies, guys. It'll pop into my head a little bit later. But anyway, I don't know what he's going to, uh, I don't know what he's going to be fetching and I got to counter this no matter what. So I'm going to throw away the prismatic lens in an island. Yeah, take that. And now we get to find out why he's been keeping this guy untapped the whole game. Untaps the land and Veil of Summer. It's the first time this card has been cast against me in Commander. I know it was printed fairly recently and was, I think, eventually banned from Standard because it just made blue and black utterly horrible, which I <laughs> completely understand. Being able to cantrip against any counter magic or black removal and giving your guys hexproof is just ridiculous. It's such an insane card. And here it was super powerful because it gives Finale of Devastation uncounterability after I've bought back Forbid. Fortunately, it doesn't actually counter the Forbid and it doesn't make this untargetable something. So the Forbid does come back to my hand. That would have been an absolute beating. If he had drawn a card and it somehow countered the Forbid as well, aye, aye, aye. Either way, it's going to resolve. And I'm thinking, okay, what the hell is he going to get? And he thinks for a long time, like a full minute, and eventually he comes up with Yavamaya Elder, which I'm very happy to see in his deck. You don't see this card played very often. I'm a huge fan of it and have used it in a bunch of different decks. I'm trying to think of like what version, what deck am I currently running Yavamaya Elder in? I had it in, I had it in my Omnath deck for ages. And uh, I think I may have just recently cut it. It's also possible it's still in there. I can't quite recall. My Omnath deck has changed a great deal. I don't think I'm probably not using Alvin My Elder anymore, but it's um, it is it is quite a powerhouse, and it's been it's been that way forever. Mainly because of the fact that even if you don't get three for one off of it, it just dying gets you two lands of your choice, two basic lands, and that will solve his blue problem. So nicely done there, Dead Mage. All right, and I draw Blink of an Eye. Pretty handy because it gives me some interactivity with these artifacts along with their Forbid. But I think about this for a long time. Obviously, I'd be really, really tempted to just shoot Yavimai uh, Elder with Nin the Pain Artist if that could somehow prevent him from getting lands. But actually, that would be doing him a favor because he would essentially be sacrificing it and drawing a card and he would get two lands out of his deck. So there's no reason to shoot it. And I do have Forbid in hand. He still doesn't have blue. And so I'm going to ponder first and see what I get. The ultimate, ultimate thing to get, of course, would be control magic, which would just be such a beating. I've stolen a fair number of Yavamaya Elders with Vidalcan Shackles, and it's such a feel-good thing to do. But in this case, it's just two land and spell pierce. That's garbage. I'm going to reshuffle. I get Chandra Pyromaster. A very, very nice answer to Yavamaya Elder, but again, it causes that same problem where he gets two lands. And I decide that as much as I would like to ping this away, I don't really want him to get two land out of his library, so I'm gonna just cast the, uh, I'm gonna cast Blink of an Eye with Kicker in order to draw a card. And I gave some thought to just casting regular Blink of an Eye because I might just be using Nin for the full amount at the end of the next turn to fuel up my hand. But I decide that it's probably fine to just do it for, uh, it's probably, I'm, I'm gonna be able to play the Command Tower so I still have a, the ability to cast a UU Counterspell, but um, I'm probably just gonna shoot the Plate of Mirror for one at the end of the turn rather than doing a big Nin activation and then save that for later on when I can shoot a Kobold token. All right, back to his turn. Now that quest for renewal piling up and he replays the Yavamai Elder and of course I'm waiting to completely slam this with the uh, Dissolve. Very nice not having to buy back the uh, Forbid this time. And on top I see Void Shatter, really, really nice. Just all the junky three mana counter spells you can fit into a deck. That's what this budget deck is. Actually, that's not true. There's lots of really bad ones I'm not using, like cancel and stuff. I think I'm using all the pretty good three mana ones. I'm not using disallow because it's not budget. All right, what's he doing? Sylvan Library. All right, he must have just drawn that. Pretty good, but he's kind of so far behind, I feel like it's not really that impactful. Not that I can do anything about it anyway. I just use Blink of an Eye, which is one of the few things I can use to stop Sylvan Library. But... I have so much mana in play at this point, I don't think it's going to really help him all that much. I should be able to kind of just control everything at this point with Nin. The, the combination of Nin for Bid is just ridiculous. And when 
for bid went over two dollars is actually back down under two dollars and i had to take it out of this version to play live i really miss this card so much it's just it's such a powerhouse in this particular deck all right i mean it's just so funny this like random janky setup and a soul ring just a bunch of random basic lands all right he finally drew land off his sylvan he took four there and he plays leafkin druid it's a strange thing he just loves his little mana guys and there's a big mana guy this thing taps for six green what on earth is he using all the mana in this deck for I don't get it. Maybe he's, I mean, I guess he, I, we saw a finale of Devastation, so perhaps he just kills people. And he must have things like Genesis Wave and Genesis Hydra and stuff. Whenever you see anybody that's running this many big green mana producing things, that's certainly their game plan. Unfortunately, he's down to just one card in hand. If I were him, I would have certainly taken all eight from the Sylvan. Just, he needs to draw something. So at the end of the turn, I've got lots of luxury here. So luxurious, in fact, that I can just shoot the Kobold and <laughs> draw four cards at the end of the turn and still have enough mana left to void shatter. You know you're in the driver's seat when that's happening. Yeah, it's just so yummy. Bam. Draw four. Processor. Island. Stoic Rebuttal. Another three mana counterspell. Actually one of the best ones in my opinion. And Future Sight. Very yummy. And as powerful as Future Sight is, it's sort of a backup plan in this deck. And uh, I'm just so far out in front with the card drawing and the ability to shoot the Kobold that it just makes future sight. It's so overshadowed now by Nin at this point. And actually, I've just drawn Processor. So if he's going to be taking damage off Sylvan, then I'm going to be pressuring his life total with the Processor. So I'm just going to play that right now. And looking at his life total, figuring he's got a Crypt in play, I kind of want to put him in a position where he'll die in two hits from the Processor if he gets a little bit greedy off the Sylvan. Additionally, I don't want to take too much damage in case he does, in fact, have Curse and Grip either in hand or on top of his library via the Sylvan, and that means that I think the right number is 8. So this is life paid 8. It's weird it doesn't even get counters or anything. And I gave some thought right away to just tapping out and making a token, but I kind of decided that even if he did, in fact, untap into, uh, into Curse and Grip and killed it, it really wouldn't be the end of the world. I still have enough mana to just make a kobold and shoot that at the end of the turn, which is an entirely acceptable backup plan. And uh, so I kind of gave him the opportunity to just have a have a curse and grip, if in fact he was lucky enough to have it. Soul ring, tundra. It's finally happened. He's he uh, cycles scattered groves, and he finally gets blue mana. Poor guy, it took so long. He was 21 cards or 20 cards down into his deck before his first blue source showed up. So now he finally gets to cast his commander. And I think he made quite a bad mistake here, actually. You notice he tapped all three lands when he's got a million green in play. There was no reason to tap this, the uh, Savannah. He could have just tapped this, tapped blue, and tapped white. And, I don't know, tapped one of these guys, or tapped his mana artifacts, cast it. Once I counter it, he's got the ability to untap a land. So he can just untap the, the Tundra. He'd have the Savannah in play untapped for white, and then he could use one of these guys on some additional amount of green mana to play it a second time to potentially overload my counter magic because he knows that I just have... He's only seen the Forbid. He can't know that I've actually got three counter spells in hand right now. So a bit of a mistake there. He may just be kind of resigning himself to the uh, game being over. And at this point, I figure, you know what? I don't think he's got Curse and Grip, but just in case he's got it and he's using this as a bait spell or something, I'm going to just make a minion in response. And I actually was being a little bit lazy here because I was looking at my mana. I was thinking, okay, how much mana do I want to leave untapped? Can I make a minion right now? How much, which counter spell do I want to use? Oh, screw it. I know I'm going to make a minion at the end of the turn almost certainly. And because uh, I don't really need to draw more cards right now, given how strong my hand is. And once I've made my minion, then I just look at my mana and I can realize which counter spell makes the most sense to play here. So that's going to be the Stoic Rebuttal. And that gives me the ability to use Nin for one at the end of the turn if he doesn't, in fact, have anything else to do. He thinks for a second about attacking <laughs> into, a, into an 8-8 and then thinks better of it and, and said, instead decides to just tap his guy. And that's it. So I feel pretty safe doing this. Sure, he could untap one land for white and do something. Academy Rector. That's the name of the white creature that gets you an enchantment. It just popped in my head. I knew it would. All right. Academy Rector. That was the thing I was worried about when he cast Finale of Devastation. So I'm going to shoot the, uh, shoot the minion for one card. 
condescend, even more counter magic. Temple of Epiphany, this is just, this is getting gross, getting gross. All right, Minion smashes in. He's down to nine already, given his Sylvan Greed. He got so lucky off the Mana Crypt this game. I'm not sure how many, if you guys are paying attention, this is like turn nine or something. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I guess I put Myriad Landscape, two lands into play with Myriad Landscape. This is like turn nine or turn 10. And I think he's only been hit by the Crypt twice so far out of like eight or nine flips. Remember, he had it on turn one. He's just thrown the Leafkin Druid to the Wolves. And now I'm just going to make another minion, preempting a potential Cross and Grip now that he gets to look at three more cards. Man, I love Phyrexian Processor. Remember I was talking earlier in the video about how you get to, uh, or I, I th actually I think that was in the other video about how when you play budget, you get to play with a lot of cards you don't normally see. And some of them really, really can impress you with their strength. Uh, for example, I've been incredibly impressed with the Frost Titan and the Inferno Titan in this deck, which you don't see played too often, certainly in regular Commander. And Processor is another card that I use in almost all my budget decks. And the card is just absolutely insane. It's so powerful in so many matchups. You're just wondering... Why do people not play this card more often? You've got 40 life. You can easily pay 10. And just paying paying 10 life and getting one 10 10 minion is insane. And if they're not able to kill it, then you just get 10 10s every turn and you overwhelm the whole board. And you win the game with it. Pretty good. Maybe it's just overshadowed by the other more degenerate stuff like Flash Hulk and so on, regular commander. All right. He takes another four damage off his Sylvan Library. He's certainly desperate as hell right now. And he's tapping some mana. Cast Chulane again. And the Chulane, with its ability to return a creature, gives him a blocker against um, one of my minions. So I decide I don't really want to allow him to bounce his guys. I'm just going to cast the Void Shatter here. So he knows I've got Forbidden Hand still. He's tapping his Seder. Untaps his Tundra. This is double white. And he casts a card. I've, another card I've never had played against me. Dusk. It's like the weakest Wrath of God you've ever seen. <laughs> Unfortunately, it does kill both minions, and this is like the full punish for me making an 8-8 arbitrarily on my turn to preempt the uh, Curse and Grip. In fact, if I only had one minion in play, I would let I would just let Dusk resolve, given that it kills his guy and just removes a minion and then just make another one at the end of the turn. But because I have two minions in play and this all but seals up the game, there's no reason not to forbid it, in my, in, in my opinion. I mean, sure, right, I could just like let it happen and sh draw some cards at the end of the turn and untap and make minions and grind them out even further. But really, why Why draw it out? I'm just going to forbid with buyback, throw away the future site. And seeing what's coming next, even though his creatures are going to untap from Quest for Renewal, he knows that there's really, really no way out of this. And Mr. Dead Mage packs it in, despite that crazy start. Fortunately, I had Soul Ring, and I was able to blunt the madness and uh, was really, really aided in the fact that his Bant deck did not deliver him a third color. But really, really enjoyed playing this game. Was very, very happy to win it after that after the start that my opponent had. And yet again, just a cool showcase of all the cool tools in this Nin budget deck, which can just get it done. Really, really fun. If you guys are interested in the deck list, feel free to say something in the comments. I will happily uh, exchange emails with you about it offer my thoughts about it and i will continue to play this deck as long as it continues to entertain me that'll be soon see you guys then have a good night